Hey everybody, uh, my name's Andy. My channel's Finding Value. Uh, I'm gonna go through what's called the largest asymmetric bets uh, and, and, and look to see how big some of these bets could be coming into uh, the greatest commodity super cycle. So I'm gonna go into a few plays of how big some of these bets could be. And they're gonna, a lot of people are gonna be, dis, they're gonna disbelieve it. And maybe they don't go this high, but they could go even higher than what I have. So keep an open mind, and I'm gonna walk through what I consider to be some of the largest asymmetric bets that are out there. So let's pop right in. And this is from the response to the most important video, uh, investing video on YouTube. So the largest asymmetric bets. Now, silver, physical silver or silver mining companies. There's something that you see um, when you look at silver and you watch the price movements. I've watched them for, for about 20 years. There is manipulation of metals on the market. You can see people come uh, in the middle of the night and dump tons they would they just sell a ton of contracts and just dump it all at once on a market that there's no one there why would anyone do that if they're trying to to sell those contracts and get the most amount of money for it there is no other explanation and there is no reason to do that now the the market the com the comex market is 100 to 150 times larger than the physical market. JP Morgan has a, the largest short, naked short squeeze, or the largest shorting, short position in silver. It is absolutely massive in relationship to the physical size of that market. Because there's, I mean, it's just massive. So, they created these ETFs. JP Morgan is the custodian for silver ETF. I think they created that to soak up liquidity uh, from investors. I don't know if they have the physical metal in that ETF and you can't redeem it. So I pose that deficits of this metal are going to expose this you're going to see the largest naked short squeeze in probably the, his, the <clears throat> in probably the history of any market. Silver right now above the ground is in a one to one ratio to gold. Gold might be the next substitute. So my question is what's, what is silver's true value to society and what, what price does it break? Or what, where does that demand stop? Because let's just say gold goes to 10,000 an ounce, which I think is maybe even on the low side now. And silver goes to a one to eight ratio, and that's what it gets mined at. That's 1,250 or $1,250 an ounce. That's a 50X. Now, that seems ridiculous, right? Or does it? What is the true value of silver? If it's at a one-to-one -one ratio to gold for a substitute, there's a possibility silver goes to $10,000 an ounce. I don't know. That could be the largest asymmetric bet that we know. Why do you think JP Morgan is holding hundreds of millions of ounces of this stuff? Maybe they think the same way. It's, mo it's got monetary protection as well. Platinum. There's manipulation of that market as well. Massive large short positions on, on that. They're, tr some, they're trying to control these markets. Again, it's the potential for the large naked short squeeze. Platinum only has 8 million ounces above ground for investment grade ounces. It's 375 times more rare than gold in that format. Fuel cells, batteries, and hybrid vehicles convert over the years and want more than three times the entire supply of platinum 
by 2050. This is the largest supply deficit that I know of. Platinum is one of the most rare metals you can invest in. Rhodium, I mean, rhodium went from $650 to $14,000 in four years. My question is, what is platinum's true value to society? If gold goes to 10,000 an ounce, platinum could easily go to 30 to $100,000 an ounce. That's a 35x increase if you go to 30,000. Now you, you say, well, it can't do that. Okay, try to, try to run an entire green economy using a, just tons of silver and platinum when we're already in balanced market in platinum and in a deficit in, sh in silver with inventory running out. I want to see how that works. How can you increase platinum's entire supply by 3x when the supply is already declining? What is that true value to society? We're pricing all of these things in dollar costs. We're not pricing it in terms of the true value to society. What happens when you hit a massive deficit? And I don't know what that means. Natural gas. Gold goes to 10,000 an ounce. At market peaks, oil to gold ratio goes to one to 10 or below. At a commodity peak, oil to natural gas usually goes to one to 10 or below too. Oil goes to 100, nat gas goes to $166 per million cubic feet. Nat gas gains 66.4 times on commodity at a one to six ratio, which is the energy content. Producers could go 6.4 times that of the commodity. That's 425 times your money. The question is, what is the true value of natural gas to society? And I'm gonna show you something because everyone discounts this and they don't really think about it. So here is, th this is just to go over that the bottom here's one to 10, market top, market top, and this is gonna revert back and be a market top, one to 10. It got down to one to six, or yeah, I think it was one to six or one to eight in 2008. Now, here's oil production. This is peak oil. We're right at the tip right now. Here is peak energy. If we're here, your energy is gonna decline going on forward. How are you gonna produce and mine at peak energy? There's gonna be a mad rush to green energy and they could mask it as uh, environmental, you know, calling it environmentally green. But the potential is there where energy to society from oil declines quite rapidly. And you can tell oil sands, tar sands, we're going down the cliff already in terms of energy return on energy invested. We're going in, in, in far remote places and drilling way under the sea to get this stuff which has lower and lower energy returns. So this is 2020 right here. They've got it somewhere like here and declining rapidly. What is the true value of society to those metals and natural gas? What is that true value? If this is real, if this is real, if this does this, that means that those metals in the ground at some of these mining sites, maybe, they'll never, maybe they can't mine them. If you can't mine them, how the heck are you gonna build all these vehicles? Let's say they do figure it out. Let's say they, they somehow figure out how to create a ton of wind turbine engines, a ton of solar panels, and, and we can mine all this stuff out of the ground. Let's say they somehow figure that out. What's the true value of some of these mining companies that are in silver then, with a billion ounces in the ground that are super low grade? Because Silver is going to be incredibly valuable to society if people can then move around and allows them to move around and transport and be on computers and, and do everything that we want to do in our life. Here's the oil price. 1970, it's scraping along the bottom. Do you think people estimated that oil was going to go to $40 in 10 years? No. You're sitting here at $10 a barrel. You think anybody's going to estimate that it was gonna to go to 140 
in, in 10 years? You think anyone estimated that? No. Someone says, oh, oil is going to go up 14 times. They'll say, screw you. Yeah, right. We have a larger imbalance in the housing market, which is going to be inflationary. It is the biggest, I think, that we've ever seen. That housing market is what drives inflation. Now, this could go way higher, way off the chart. Now, look at here. This is $100 more. And if you were to create a chart that goes up like this through these, that could be way up here. It could be three, four, five, six hundred dollars a barrel. Easy, easy. And that's all this is, is, a, is an expanding wedge. You got the wedge here and you've got the wedge going up at a very rapid pace. So when this comes out and meets it, it's going to be so far up there that it's unbelievable. And I, I, I don't think people are grasping. I don't think they're grasping this. And it took me a while to grasp this. You know, what, what's the value of, of some of these things to society? I don't know the answer necessarily. I mean, silver and platinum, they, the upside potential is so large. Everyone is, is pricing things off of dollar cost, not based off of energy. Do you know how hard it is and how much energy it takes to get platinum? I don't think anyone knows that. It is extremely difficult. Silver, it's all found at the surface. You mine the living heck out of it, you throw it in trace amounts in the garbage, and you can't really recover it very well. Silver is gonna to start to decline in production. At the same time, everyone wants it in their products. What kind of scenario is that? You've got two, two physical precious metals that have monetary protection, that have zero risk, is considered reserves, at least gold is, as a tier one asset. And we're heading into a green technology world where they want to use the living heck out of it and the deficits are greater than, some of them are greater than the entire production of today. What is the true value of of those metals to society. This is Finding Value. Let me know what you think of the clip. Subscribe, comment, and rate. Thank you.